I need to get all these veg starts planted before I run out of warm spring days. My whole family has been sick, and it's been pouring rain, so the greenhouse is a swamp, and my basement is flooded, and I'm pretty sure the pump is shot. I've got a million things to do, actually, but there's a lot riding on these plants. And we could still have frost, but it's getting up into the mid-20s during the day, so I'm just going to give it a shot. Am I going to make it? Is there enough time? Let's see. So this is going to be a gardening video, but it's not really going to be a tutorial on how to correctly germinate bell peppers. It is going to be a demonstration on how a husband and father of two juggles a dozen side hustles and a day job in order to pay the bills and keep healthy food on the table. And today, I'll show you how bell peppers fits into that. And so if you're bobbing in the riptide of the Canadian recession like I am, then I hope you find this entertaining. Actually, you know what, I, I hope that you find it helpful, even though I'm not claiming to have any answers necessarily. But let's look at this as an example of an alternative way to do things. I'm going to do a lot of things wrong, and you can learn from my mistakes. And I'm going to get some things right, and then you get to go and do those things yourself with less apprehension. So I'm welcoming all the criticism that you can give on any of the projects that I'll be posting here. Uh, we're going to do fruit and veg gardening, farm gate sales, uh, tree nursery hustle, raising clandestine hens for eggs, programming apps, building robots, cleaning old machines, we're refurbishing tools and furniture and antiques for sale, uh, we're hunting for the antiques and any kind of junk that we can find to sell at auctions and yard sales. We do graphic and web design, we do gunsmithing, uh, hardwood joinery, trapping, hunting, fishing, parenting. And I'm going to thread family finances through the whole work. Like, how can you afford to do these things if you enjoy them? And how can these things pay for themselves or at least offset your costs? You know, online media is a wash right now with lifestyle coaches and get rich quick streamers behind a ring light. I want to give you a little bit more of an honest appraisal on what can and can't be done especially to anybody younger than me, who's also looking at our economy, pulling their hair out, saying, how am I ever going to afford to form a family? I know I've got a lot of younger friends in that position, so here you go. As ugly as it is, it is possible. And honestly, I kind of love it. So I won't talk your ear off anymore today. Let's get down to the fruit and veg. <laughs> So I say bell peppers, but really we're talking about nightshades, our solanaceas. In our case, that's Roma tomatoes, bell peppers, banana peppers, cayenne, and little baby eggplants. We're in zone 5B, which is warm for Canada, but cold for nightshades, which prefer a hot and dry climate. We've also got a little shorter summer than they want, so we're going to start them early in the greenhouse. We've got garden soil here, which I picked up from the garden center because it's only five bucks. And I'm mixing that together 50-50 with my own soil, which came out of last year's pots and also has some compost from our backyard compost pile. I'm going to mix that pretty well with this kid's shovel and then uh, move it over to a station farther down the greenhouse for filling trays. Last year, I did the filling on the ground. And if you're doing more than a couple of these, seriously consider setting up even a temporary spot like on sawhorses or something, your back will absolutely thank you the following day. Now I haven't got like a 10-20 tray or anything to catch the excess soil. So instead I put a towel down below and I'm going to use that to scoop the leftover soil back into the pot when I'm done. Any chunks or bark or sticks that get in there are usually large enough to get caught in the cell when I'm smoothing it out. So now is the time when I'm going to pull those out. This gets placed on the ground momentarily to get a little bit of water from the old can. Then I pick it back up onto the dry table and I use a stick to make some divots for the seeds. Now, solanaceous seeds tend to want to be about a quarter inch deep, but the rule of thumb generally is to plant the seed about as deep as it is wide. Once they're seeded, I just roll the top layer of soil back down over top, lightly pack it down, give it a little bit more water, put it back on the rack, quick and easy. Why? Last year we planted a few of these for ourselves, but it was too late in the season and we didn't have a greenhouse. And these do want 20 to 30 degrees to germinate, like Celsius. So we're starting them early in the greenhouse this year, 
and I don't really know if we're going to be getting those temps except for maybe in the middle of the day, and that's why we're planting a ton of them. We also intend to sell these starts, so I figure we got a bazillion seedling trays and pots, and the seeds come in at least 50 a pack, so usually, I mean, you know, why not use them all up? Came to this realization after seeing how many seeds were left from last year. As with everything I'm doing here, the goal is to figure out what I'm already going to do, like planting peps and tomates in this case, and how that can be done for less. And making pocket money off of something you're doing anyways is kind of the same thing as doing it for less. Kind of like YouTube. The goal here is if we do enough starts for myself and my extended family, and then we have enough to sell and maybe make like 50 bucks back, that would be cool. That way we've got a little cash and we could almost say that the food was free. In times like these, finding a way to reduce your expenses is just as good as finding a way to make money. Problems. There's all kinds of obvious problems with the way that I've done this. One, the greenhouse is not great. There's no airflow or temperature or humidity control and my trays don't have lids, so disease and mold is probably gonna be an issue. That's offset a little bit by me planting way more than I needed, hopefully. Two, the soil mix is also not ideal. If you could use a dry, sterile seedling mix, like something with peat and perlite, that would have been great. I just don't have the cash for it. Three, these cells are a little bit small for nightshades. Ideally, you'd want something deeper so that you can let them get up a few inches, like get a couple of sets of true leaves before you're transplanting them. I, I've done these before and they do work okay, but I have a feeling that sometimes they're getting stunted by using the smaller cells. Four, all kinds of labor efficiency issues um, and also time efficiency. Like obviously I'm using a small kid's shovel to mix my compost. I'm watering from an old galvanized can that leaks. I'm using this like dirty car rag to catch the excess. There's a lot of improvements that could be made around there. What should I have done? Environmental control would be the first thing I'd pay to improve. In my case, that probably means fixing greenhouse drafts, rigging up some fans to turn on when it's too hot or humid, and I might still do this, actually. Uh, next thing would be to purchase some proper seedling mix or invest in making my own, but to be honest, I've done it this way before and the losses aren't that bad, so we'll just have to see in the summer whether it actually makes any difference. Deeper cells I probably will do next year. In this case, I just had bought these trays already for lettuce and some other stuff, and they're fine for that. Uh, I should get more variety though. In terms of upgrades to my other tools, I could do it. But you know, the whole idea here is ROI. I'm not a full-time gardener, and I don't really think you should be. I want every minute and dollar that I put into this to pay out. So I'm not really interested in chasing diminishing returns. Even if the return I get from a project may not be the maximum possible for the space and resources available, as long as the rate of return is good relative to the time and money that I put in, then I'm happy. And I've still got time, money, and energy left to put into other things. I know I'm going off here a little bit again, but the, the point is the structure, like the backbone of my rationale for taking on 100 half-baked schemes is that each one individually can still have a high rate of return. And I get to learn a skill which is useful later. And in my experience, when you've been doing this for a long time, you start to find ways that you can blend these skills and experiences together to get better returns or to access like resources and networks that you couldn't get otherwise. Kind of like nice peppers and darker yolk eggs and you no, know, or meeting people. So there we go. The peppers are in the ground, maybe a little bit early, but we'll follow up and see. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like and subscribe for the next video, which should be in about a week. Coming up, I'm going to be covering chickens and a couple of other businesses like the nursery, uh, design, and of course, gardening updates throughout because it's the spring. We're going to weave all that together as much as we can. And uh, everything that's been introduced, we'll start doing some follow-ups, you know, so you can see how much money I made or you can laugh at me if it's all a loss. Anyhow, leave a comment if you want to yell at me about my technique or if you have a suggestion. You know, I like to say it's going to get worse before it gets worse. But uh, we're Canadians, so we're pretty much built for this. I'm sorry I'm taking the fun away here. I'm doing it for you. Yeah. And I also get everyone use my watering can. You do. You're so good at sharing. Thanks, pal. I appreciate you sharing your watering can. Yeah, I, I always get tons of play my watering can. You do, don't you? It's because you're a good sister? Yeah. Yeah.